All right, welcome to the third review of the evening, Dark Chess. This is not classic chess. Dark Chess is a game of chess with fog of war. Story-driven campaign with challenges, traps, and puzzles. A game-changing feature to conceal enemy armies. Add more fun and intrigue to a timeless classic. Fight your way through the campaign and beat your friends and foes in PvP. Um, I will note, uh, we did not play PvP, so that's not going to be covered in this review. With that in mind, over to the Gallic, since he was given this game for review. Uh, so they say that, but then a few of the... So, uh, there is the campaign... There are various modes in this. You can PvP, you can just randomly play against the computer with set rules... Or you, which there are various selections of different rules you can use, and then there's a campaign mode. I mostly play campaign mode because it recommended that as the way to get to know the game. I guess uh, I will warn you: I am not actually good at chess. I know how the pieces move, but I cannot read other people. I do not like. I can't play moves ahead because I have no... I can't predict what moves the other person is going to make. Uh, I just have bad theory of mind. And also I have a hard time seeing the whole board at once. So I don't know any of the traditional ways to like force a mate in a game of normal chess. Um, so I played on easy after the first couple of stages. Um... So the story of this is, is like a friggin' magical dark chessboard of some sort that has been owned by many rulers across the ages, and you're trapped in it, and in order to escape, you have to uh, travel across the land and defeat all of them. So what this means is you fight against one, one historical figure with uh, various rules then you have to do a chess puzzle, which are endgame puzzles, which are usually uh, given a board state. You have to either get a checkmate in one move or in, like, a couple of moves. Uh, you're being guided by this white-bearded guy whose name is apparently Albus, and... Uh, there's voice acting between him and all the historical figures. Uh, not everything is pronounced right, uh, and the inflections are a little bit weird. So, I'm sure what you're here for is, so what kind of rules bullshit do you get? Um, so, the default thing that is in, like, half or more of the stages is that there's fog of war. Um... You can only see from two squares around your guys or in squares that they threaten. Uh, another thing is that... Another fairly common thing is that... Uh, and this is actually kind of a good thing, but it can also be challenging, is that uh, in the dark chess mode, and in some of the other ones, uh, you have to capture the king instead of just putting them in check or in, in putting them in checkmate, which on one hand, uh, they can do that to you too and get you by surprise, and it's it's like a little bit less deliberate, but if the computer makes a mistake, which it will do sometimes on easy mode, it's possible to like take the king from a position that they could have gotten out of if they thought differently. Like, you can... Like miss that you're in check in those modes. Uh, some of the historical figures also play with different uh, teams, like Genghis Khan has one king and I think 15 knights, because uh, Mongol like horsey. Uh, some of them... Uh, even and sometimes even there's also some of them are playing in regular chess mode, which you do have to get mate, and you can see everything. But sometimes there are still 
trap doors or magical spots that will promote any of the enemy's pieces to a queen upon touching them. Uh, sometimes you deal with a completely alternate uh, set of things, like starting off with most of the enemy's pieces crammed in one corner and you only have a pawn and a king, or a more... Uh, I forget who it is, but you fight someone in India with a setup that is uh, supposed to be similar to Chaturanga. In that, and in that one, you only get one of each piece except for pawns, and you start on opposite corners instead of just on opposite sides. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of different ways they mess around with it. Sometimes it's just, oh hey, also there's a time limit... Or if you don't do it, or if you, there's at least, there's one where you literally had to just, you had a whole bunch of kings and you had to get one of them to the other side of the board. Uh, but if you move the something into the wrong square, uh, the board cracks and there are pits that they fall into. Uh, which was, I mean, it's randomized, but still you get eight trial and errors which is arguably easier than trying to get a checkmate in a situation where the enemy only has a king left and you have, like, a king, a bishop, and a rook. At least to me. Honestly, to get as far as I did, there were a couple of stages like that one where you only have a king and a pawn, where I had to find an online chess move re move calculator because chess is a solved game uh computers are capable like there's a limited number of possible things unless you introduce new movement rules which i don't think this has uh like i don't think this is i don't think this is fair there i don't think there's any fairy chess in here which is if i remember correctly what they call it when you start including imaginary pieces Um, but they do give you very strange assortments of pieces. Um, so yeah, honestly, if you're, if you are good at chess and like trying different things, this will probably have some appeal to you. But if you're like me and have a hard time visualizing an entire chess board and, uh, reading what you think the opponent's going to do. Um, it can be very frustrating. Um, the music is decent, even if the voice acting is questionable. Um, as you play, you unlock, uh, new avatars. Uh, well, you ha your avatar is very complicated here. You have a portrait, you have a border... You have uh, a banner, you have a symbol on the banner, uh, and you unlock new options of those for use in PvP mostly. I mean, it happens in the regular, you use them in the regular game too, but the point of changing it is obviously to show it off to other people, not just to, well, I guess if you feel more like looking like a bird or whatever. Um, I am nowhere near good enough at chess to verify, uh, how good or bad the computer is, aside from good enough to beat me if it wants to. Um, but again, I don't know how to force mate very well. Um... Do you guys have any questions? I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. I'm good. Because it is mostly chess. Just, uh, there are, uh, dumb rules. Also, uh, it doesn't always tell you all, I think, uh, when you're in dark chess, it doesn't always reveal the special rules until it comes into effect, I think. So, like, when Ivan the Terrible gets... Uh, impatient and suddenly adds a time limit late in the game, I think. Although that might have been, I might be wrong about that one. Or 
the uh, magic promotion spot that I mentioned was I 99% sure was not mentioned on the board until he advanced his pawns directly into it. And then I was in a bad situation because you always go first and uh, you may or may not make a slightly different move. If you know that uh, E th- E five uh, or no E yeah, E five is a spot where uh, friggin' any of your opponent's pieces that land on it get turned into a goddamn queen. Uh, the mate puzzles that you have to do in between each actual opponent do get harder, but they start out quite easy. Usually, you just have to look at okay, so what's th- where is the king being threatened from, and how can I make it be threatened more, or something like that. Um. So I guess some of it depends on how much this is going. For. Oh, and you can also, I think for the beginning, you can change the color of your chessboard slightly. You can change between... Uh, the default is cartoony people-shaped po- uh, pieces, like they, they have humanish or other things. Like the king and queen look are sculpted to look like they have like hair and a beard. Um, but you can change to the traditional icon style or actual chess piece looking pieces, uh, I believe, from the start. Uh, but yeah, what what are we looking at price wise here? Uh, let's see, twelve ninety nine. I guess it's not that bad. And there are at least three three um, chapters of the campaign or whatever. Which I think mostly involves fighting the same people over and over again, but with different rules. But I, again, did not even get through the first one entirely because I am not good at chess, so I can't promise that. Um, If the idea of a chess game where you get to experience a whole bunch of different variant games, but you do also occasionally have to play actual chess... uh. Sounds appealing to you. This is probably going to be pretty good. I think. I guess the only problem uh, that's I'm not a, seeing that, that's. Hmm? Um, is there a bunch of free chess games online? So unless the concept of fog of war chess is really appealing, the price point might be a little steep. That's more. That's mostly what I'm getting at. You're playing it for the variants. Yeah, because you can get diff- free diff- chess literally scenarios. in your browser right now. Yeah, and you can also you can make it uh, PVE player versus computer with some of the some of the random rules. Mm-hmm. I think mostly the fog of war, but um, yeah. the fog so yeah, of war is really it, the, the only I, new thing here. The, I don't know how many. I don't know the status of chess games. I, at least, I guess, for, like, basic free chess, I haven't really seen anything, like, at least, like, any of the versions has, like, been packed in with Windows for, you know, the last 20 years. Haven't really had yeah, any, th- like, th- fog th- of war or anything like that. The campaign here is the thing that's going to be the most unique, I think. Yeah. Like, I know there have been chess games that have some kind of campaign, but, like... Mm-hmm. Not specifically like this. Yeah, in this in this case, the campaign is a whole bunch of weird chess-related things. I don't think it's like too bad at that price. If you want to wait for it on sale, that's fine. That said, if you don't, if you like like the chess puzzle games that we've done before, like uh, the the one with knights or whatever. Um, the, the ones where you have to do, like, night tours to get things around, or you have to use chess moves. Uh, this is not that you are playing actual chess game-related style things. hmm So, be aware of that. Yep. Uh, and I think that's about what I got. All right, then. Um, so, yeah, that'll about do it for Dark Chess here. 
Uh, be sure to tune in after the break as we give impressions over Vampire Hunters.